This is part six of a series of many videos about what are called parametric curves. The main application of parametric curves that most people think about is modeling motion, though it's not the only application. Um, and as such, the simple it's a very physics-related subject. And what we've been thinking about so far is the simplest kind of motion, straight line motion at a constant speed. In probably part seven or eight, I'm going to get to other kinds of motion, not along a straight line, not at a constant speed. But in this part, I want to focus on a couple mathematical things, the difference between a curve and a parametric curve, as well as talking about the technique of eliminating the parameter. Um, and we're actually, even though this is in a Mathematica notebook, and I have been teaching you Mathematica, this program that I'm showing you here, um, in this video, we're actually not going to do any new Mathematica. I might run some code a little bit, but I won't show you any new commands. So first of all, here's a subtlety. What is the difference between a curve and a parametric curve? curve? The first way I can highlight the difference here is I could add a word to this one. I could add the word geometric curve right there. What I'm really talking about is the difference between a geometric curve and a parametric curve. So when I say just plain curve, I really mean geometric curve. Well, think about it in the context of our example here. Our example was to use parametric equations to model the motion of a person starting from the point 2, negative 1 and going to the point negative 1, 3 in one second at a constant speed. In Mathematica, I'll go ahead and run some Mathematica here. We had some linear functions that we used to model this motion. And we ultimately, in the last video, I believe, we looked at this particular code right here. And we saw the motion happening. The dot is where the person is as time goes by. And the red line is where the person has traveled. You can see time going by with this slider marked with a B. So that was the motion, and we used linear functions to do that. Call that this the set of parametric equations, x equals f of t equals negative 3t plus 2, and y equals g of t equals 4t minus 1. You think of that as a system of parametric equations that defines and represents and models that motion. We can also use another function that I called c of t. That's a different kind of function to represent the location of the person as a function of time. So these two functions take real number inputs and give you real number outputs. This function is a different kind of function that takes real number inputs and gives you points as outputs. It is still a function. You're still getting a unique point for each time for each input. T is the parameter here. So what makes this different? difference? What is the difference between a geometric curve and a parametric curve. In a nutshell, the geometric curve is, in this case, the actual line segment as a set of points between uh, the starting point and the ending point. Again, the starting point was 2, negative 1, and the ending point was negative 1, 3. I'm looking up here between Two, negative 1 and negative 1, 3. Um, notationally, as a set, you'll often see people write something like this. This is not necessarily absolutely imperative for you to know, but it's just for your information here. With C being the function I'm focusing on here, if you ever see a math teacher write something like this, and maybe they would get rid of the parentheses in the last expression, that's talking about the set of all outputs of the function c as the inputs range over the closed interval from 0 to 1. i here is my shorthand for the closed interval from 0 to 1. I'm not plugging in a point when I look at this. I'm not plugging in a number. I'm thinking of this as a set, the set of all outputs, the image it's sometimes called, or the range. With set builder notation, you could write it like this. You want to read this as saying this is the set, the collection of all possible points, c of t, and there are points in the plane, 
such that t ranges over the interval from 0 to 1. t is an element of the interval from 0 to 1. It's a number between 0 and 1 inclusive. That's a way you can write the image, the geometric curve, as a set. Whereas the parametric curve represents the motion. The geometric curve has no motion information. It's just where was the person over time, OK? The parametric curve represents the motion, both direction and speed information. And basically what that means is C itself. In other words, the function C itself is the parametric curve. And I'm putting is and curve in quotes because we don't normally think of functions as being curves. Okay, what I am saying here, and this is a common thing to do, is that the parametric curve is really the function because the function captures both the uh, direction and speed information. It is what's really, really modeling the motion. Okay, that's, that's a, a subtlety that's, that's confusing, but I would encourage you to think about it a little bit. That is the distinction that I wanted to highlight here. All right, um, I can continue highlighting this by showing you the, uh, an important technique, at least in simple situations, of how to eliminate the parameter. T, time, is the parameter, though it doesn't always have to be time, but in many case it is, cases it is time. What I want to show you now is how to eliminate the parameter. We can eliminate the parameter t by essentially solving one of these equations, it doesn't matter which one, up here for t in terms of either x or y, depending on which one you pick, and then substituting that expression for t into the other equation to get rid of the t, to eliminate it, to just get an equation involving x and y. probably most typical in this kind of situation to solve this equation, x equals negative 3t plus 2 for t to get, maybe pause the video and do it yourself. What are we going to get? We're going to get, well, if you subtract 2, you'll get x minus 2 first. Then you got to divide by negative 3. You would initially perhaps write it like that. That could be simplified to negative one-third x plus two-thirds. That solves this equation for t in terms of x. And then substituting this into the other equation, y equals, let's see here, y equals 4t minus 1 for t to get y equals 4. Now I'm going to replace this entire t with this entire thing here. Copy and paste. And then simplify. What would we get? We would get negative 4 thirds x and then plus 8 thirds, think about this here, minus 1. The, the 8 thirds would come from 4 times 2 thirds. I'm using the, the distributive property there. 4 times 2 thirds is going to be 8 thirds. Minus 1, which is 3 thirds, would be 4 thirds plus 5 thirds. And this equation right here is the result of what we get when we eliminate the parameter. And it is the equation of the line. If you continue, continued it forever and ever, this is a line with a slope of negative 4 thirds, looks reasonable, and a y-intercept of 5 thirds, which is about 1.67, looks reasonable if you look right there. Okay, so that was a fairly easy thing to do in, in the context of straight line motion at a constant speed when these two functions are linear. Actually, any straight line motion, it's a pretty easy thing to do, if you, even if it's not at a constant speed. 
Um, when you've got curves, though, true nonlinear curves, geometric curves, if you're not moving along a straight line, then it can be harder or maybe even impossible, practically speaking, though theoretically speaking, it might still be possible. So I'll end the video here now. Uh, again, in the next couple videos, we'll start to get into other kinds of motion.